वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स टू अनदर लेक्चर ऑन रिफ्रैक्शन ऑफ लाइट एट प्लेन सरफेसेस ओके सो द नेक्स्ट प्लेन सरफेस दैट नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डील विद इज अ प्रिज्म ओके अ रिफ्रैक्टिंग साइड ऑफ अ प्रिज्म सो लेट अस फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट डू वी मीन बाय द वर्ड प्रिज्म एंड हाउ डज इट लुक यू माइट हैव ऑलरेडी सीन इट इज मेड अप ऑफ ग्लास सो वी विल फर्स्ट रीड द डेफिनेशन ऑफ प्रिज्म व्हिच इज गिवन ओवर हियर a transparent medium why transparent because it is usually made up of uh, glass different types of glasses okay so a transparent medium through which light can enter and come out also okay bounded by five plane surfaces okay so remember once again the chapter that we are discuss uh, discussing is refraction of light at plane surfaces okay so this is another plane surface that we are going to deal with so this prism that we are going to talk about is uh, bounded by five plane surfaces okay so now you see in this particular diagram i have drawn a rough uh, uh, three dimensional diagram mm, although on board it is difficult to draw that but then i have tried to draw this uh, so that it represents uh, a three dimensional picture so you will have to visualize in the mind that it is not just a triangle if you have a look at this particular diagram this is also of a prism but this is only showing one face the front face of the prism so you will not be able to get the better idea by looking at this this is the diagram that you need to look at in the beginning so you see uh, what all uh, surfaces are there one obviously you have the base okay so that is one surface then you have one sloping surface this side the other sloping surface on the opposite side so one two these two sloping surfaces are known as refracting surfaces because generally light enters from these sides okay so refracting surfaces how many of them are there one this side one this side okay so that makes it 2 plus one base that is 3 okay one triangular front here and one at the back okay so you can see one base is there two sloping surfaces are there so that makes it 3 and one triangle in the front and one triangle at the back so total overall we have five plane surfaces and they these five plane surfaces are actually touching each other at the ends so as to form a three dimensional prism okay so that is the first line now coming to the second line it has a triangular cross section okay so this triangular section that i have drawn over here for our detailed study is nothing but this portion if you see okay it is this portion that i have taken out and drawn magnified it and drawn the diagram over here okay so obviously this sloping surface and this sloping surface is nothing but these refracting surfaces as i have shown in the three dimensional diagram over here you can have a look at the diagram in the book also they have drawn this is one sloping surface and this is the other sloping surface so these two sloping surfaces are called as refracting surfaces so it is this surface and this surface that is there okay so now having a uh, look uh, having had a look at uh, this uh, picture now we will uh, go into the detailed study of how our ray of light is incident at one of the refracting surfaces so you see in this particular diagram the three dimensional uh, uh, the the triangular cross section that i have drawn this one abc is this portion abc and as you can see this portion a this angle a the darkened angle a is known as the angle of the prism or it is also known as the refracting angle okay so depending upon the shape of the prism that you have taken up this angle a can vary it can be different it can be 60 it can be uh, 90 it can be 45 and so on and so forth okay so uh, keeping this uh, in mind now you see there is a incident ray that is traveling over here so this is the direction of the ray uh, that i have drawn just to save time i have drawn the diagram beforehand uh this is a monochromatic ray of light mono means single and chroma means color because we already know by now that different colored lights have different uh, uh, refraction angles okay when they go through a particular medium so we are going to take a case of a single colored light or a monochromatic incident light okay so the moment it falls now obviously this is air medium which is uh, which it is traveling in so once it uh, falls on the first surface ab 
of the prism so prism obviously is made up of glass okay whereas on this side you have air and at the other end also you have air okay so from air into glass now the ray has to go so air is rarer medium and glass is optically denser medium so whenever ray of light goes from a rarer to a denser medium it bends towards the normal okay so where is the normal now uh, please uh, concentrate only on this particular surface as of now do not look at this particular surface okay although that's the completed diagram but i want you to focus right now at the ab surface okay because this is the first surface of separation between air and glass that this ray of light is facing okay so the moment it reaches over here it has to bend what was the original direction by the way the original direction of the ray was like this okay so with dotted line i have produced it forward assuming that this would have been the direction of the ray if the prism was not present okay but since the prism is present there is a difference there is a change of the medium so the ray cannot keep on going like this it will have to bend bend which side towards the normal so you see this n1 is the normal that i have drawn at this particular point on this surface please be very thorough with the concept of normal normal is always drawn with a dotted line and it is perpendicular at 90 degree to the surface okay so this is the surface on which this ray was falling so the normal will be drawn like this okay so n1 is the first normal at this surface okay so instead of the ray instead of going straight like this it has bent you can see it has bent where towards the normal this is the normal so it has bent towards the normal okay so pq is the new path that it has taken up inside the prism okay so this pq i have written over here it is the refracted ray okay so this was the incident ray now this is the refracted ray once again when it moves forward and reaches the second surface of separation which is ac as you can see because once again from glass the ray has to go into air so there is a difference in the optical densities so again that rule from denser to rarer it will bend away from the normal so you see the original direction was this it had to go like this it had to go like this but it has bent this way so this way is away from the normal you can see this is the normal at this surface okay again at 90 degrees so this is the normal at this particular surface so instead of the ray going like this it has to bend bend in which direction away from the normal away from the normal okay so this comes out the ray that comes out is known as uh, the final or the emergent ray and you can see that the original ray although it was going in an upward sort of a direction when it comes out after successive refractions at two surfaces it actually is getting moving towards the base of the prism this is basically the base of the prism that we talked about okay so the base of the prism bc it is actually now going towards the base okay so this is the process that is taking place so now if somebody asks you how many refractions are taking place so there are two refractions that are taking place one is at the surface ab and the other is at the surface ac which are the two refracting surfaces of the prism now so what is our motive why are we studying refraction through a glass prism because glass prism also offers plane surfaces and we have to study refraction at plane surfaces now going into further details now we have to establish a relationship between the angle of incidence the angle of prism and the angle of deviation so all these things we are going to study now have a look at the markings over here i'll start from here you can very well see that since this was the incident ray and this was the normal so this i1 will become the angle of incidence at the first surface okay so now it bends the moment it bends it creates an angle of refraction r1 okay so r1 is the angle of refraction at the first surface okay so what will be the deviation what will be the angle of deviation at the first surface 
So if I call the angle of deviation as delta 1 at the first surface, I can write deviation. Now what is angle of deviation? If you recall, angle of deviation is the angle by which the ray bends. Okay. So now it's very logical. You see, this was the original, this was supposed to be the original direction of the ray. Okay. But it bent. How much did it bend? This much. Okay. So in the diagram, actually it is this angle delta 1. Okay. By which the ray has bent. Once again, I'll try to explain again. This was the original direction of the ray. Incident ray. The original direction. But the ray got bent. Bent by how much? You see? This was the ray. Okay. So, this much. By this much angle, the ray has bent. So, I am going to call this as delta 1. The angle of deviation at the first surface. So, by... Uh, mathematical uh, by having a mathematical look at all these angles I can say that my angle I1 is actually equal to the sum of delta 1 and R1 because these are vertically opposite angles if you see if you notice this entire angle and this entire angle they are vertically opposite okay so I can write simply angle I1 is equal to angle delta 1 plus angle R1 okay so therefore with the help of this I can write delta 1 will become I1 minus R1 okay so that is number 1 okay so the first deviation or the deviation angle at the first surface comes out to be this now going to the second surface over here similarly I can write this angle to be delta 2 okay so I can write delta 2 will be equal to I2 minus R2 this time based on the same concept okay so at this surface the deviation delta 2 is I2 minus R2 okay so now If you look at this small triangle PQS over here, over here, this small one, this small triangle PQS that I have drawn over here, if you have a careful look at this triangle, you will see that this delta, which is the total deviation, this angle delta is the exterior angle to this triangle. Okay, and we know that this exterior angle is equal to the sum of interior opposite angles. Okay, in mathematical in mathematics, while studying uh, uh, the properties of triangles, we have studied. Now I'm going to draw a small diagram over here uh, just to help you understand. If this is a triangle and uh, you produce this line forward, this becomes the exterior angle. Okay. This is the exterior angle and it is equal to the sum of this angle and this angle, okay. So exterior angle is equal to sum of interior opposite angles, okay. On the same concept, in this triangle PQS, PS has been forwarded. So you see this delta, this delta by the way, uh, you can write that down, this delta is the total deviation. This is the total angle of deviation that we have, okay, because you see, once the incident ray, initially it was going in this direction, finally, when it comes out on the other side of the prism, it comes out in this particular direction. So, instead of going in this particular direction, the ray actually bent by this much angle. How much angle? This much angle. So it is this angle that we are calling delta or the total deviation. So I can easily write down this delta can be written as delta 1 plus delta 2. Okay. It can be written as delta 1 plus delta 2. Now delta can be written as, now I can easily replace this delta 1 with I1 minus R1 and plus delta 2 can be replaced by I2 minus R2 okay which will give me 
Now if you see I1 and I2 they are with the positive sign so I can write I1 plus I2 together minus R1 is also having minus sign R2 is also having minus sign so if I take out minus common I will get delta is equal to I1 plus I2 minus R1 plus R2. Okay, so now uh, this is where we have arrived. Okay, Remember what was our motive in doing all this? Our motive was to establish a relationship between my angle of incidence, angle of prism and the total deviation. Okay, So that we get an idea as to what exactly this total deviation depends upon. Okay, We must know, we will study after we complete this uh, derivation, we will try and understand what are the various factors on which this delta depends. Because basically this delta is nothing but the angle of deviation, total angle of deviation or the total angle through which the ray has bent. Okay, So this is the total deviation. What are the factors that decide? the value of delta. Delta can be less, delta can be more depending upon a number of situations. Okay, So we are going to just now try to find out whether our delta depends upon angle A, whether it depends upon angle of incidence or not. Okay, So as of now I have got delta in my equation but I have not got A in our equation. Okay, So now we will try to get A into our equation. Okay, so uh, once we obtain this particular uh, equation, now we are going to try to bring angle of prism into this equation. Now we can't just bring A just like that. We have to establish a relationship. Now you see in triangle PQR, where is this triangle? PQR. It is this small triangle that we have. I can easily write down R1 plus R2 plus this angle R as 180 because these are the three angles of the triangle so sum of the three angles is 180 degree therefore r1 plus r2 can be written as 180 minus r okay now in quadrilateral a p r q where is a p r q a p r q in this quadrilateral that you see this is a quadrilateral so it has four angles I am going to start from this angle which is angle A this angle plus now come to this angle this full angle as you see this was the normal going so this full angle will be 90 degree okay so 90 plus the third angle is R plus again this fourth angle is also 90 degree because this is the normal so this quadrilateral A P R Q has 1, 2, 3, 4 angles out of which these two are 90. Okay, So once I write this angle A plus angle R becomes 360 and 90, 90, 180 goes to that side it gets subtracted so you get angle A plus angle R is equal to 180 degree. Okay, Which gives me angle R as 180 minus angle A. So this angle A goes to the other side. Okay, now why am I trying to get this angle R in terms of A? Because please remember our original equation needs to have angle of prism in it. Okay, so this angle R, this angle R value in terms of A can be replaced in this equation 3. So you can see in 3, this was equation 3, R1 plus R2, it was 180 minus R. So 180 minus, now this R value I have taken from here. Okay, because now we will get rid of R and we are going to get A in it. Okay, so 180 minus 180, 180 gets cancelled, minus and minus becomes plus angle A. Okay, so your R1 plus R2 becomes angle of prism. Now this R1 plus R2 you can easily replace with this angle A. So in the next line I will write delta is equal to I1 plus I2 minus in place of this R1, R2, I will simply put A. This equation originally which did not have angle of prism in it, now you can see that there is angle of prism also present in it. Okay, So that means our total deviation angle 
total deviation angle actually dis depends upon angle of prism also okay so if you choose different types of prism with different angles of a then you will obviously have different angles of deviation now till now we have been calling i1 and i2 uh, i1 is angle of incidence i have already explained and if you see i2 i had written emergent angle which is the angle which uh, the emergent ray makes with the normal okay now having obtained this particular generic formula so this is the formula that we have obtained now from our derivation now this delta means deviation and it will change depending upon i1 i2 and a now for a special case of minimum deviation there is always a minimum deviation case that is possible which means that uh, deviation produced by that prism will not go below that value okay so that minimum deviation is uh, uh, represented by delta minimum you can say you will write it like this delta minimum and that uh, it was experimentally found that that case arises when we have i1 equal to i2 which means i1 was angle of incidence and i2 was angle of emergence so whenever i1 and i2 they match okay whenever i i1 and i2 match that means they have the same value so we can say that they are both equal to i so in that case in our original equation i will write delta now this delta is delta minimum this delta has become delta minimum because we are studying the special case of minimum deviation so equal to now i1 and i2 both are same both are equal to i so i plus i gives me a value of 2i and minus a okay so this special case actually comes from our original formula itself but since this is a special case this is studied separately and this has a separate condition also as you saw angle of incidence and angle of emergence they both will become same okay and they will become equal since they are same we can call i1 also as i i2 also as i so when we put i plus i you will get 2i minus a okay so please remember these two formulae this is for the general uh, case of deviation and this is for the minimum deviation case in case of minimum minimum deviation it was found that the ray when it enters into the prism uh, an equiangular prism this refracted ray becomes actually parallel to the base of the prism okay so this actually becomes parallel to the base of the prism okay so based on these two formula we will uh, solve uh, at least one numerical i'll solve over here in this class okay but before going on to the numerical let us uh, study the factors involved so the factors affecting delta just now we studied delta delta is nothing but the angle of deviation produced in a uh, prism okay so what are the fa various factors uh, please remember that uh, just now we uh, discussed and actually derived the formula of derivation and it came out to be the general formula came out to be i1 plus i2 minus a okay so obviously from the formula you can easily say that angle of prism is one factor that decides delta okay an angle of incidence is one factor that decides delta but this formula does not give you the entire picture okay okay so what are the different factors obviously the material of the prism why material of the prism means the refractive index of the prism because you can always have uh, prisms made up of different types of glasses which have different optical dens densities so different values of refractive index will produce varying amounts of refraction therefore delta or deviation will also come out to be different okay second is angle of incidence obviously we saw that angle of prism a and then obviously please remember you we used a monochromatic ray of light that monochromatic ray of light can be of any color blue yellow green uh, red okay and violet so based on their wavelengths or which is exactly uh, actually the color the based on the wavelength of those colors you will also have different values of delta okay so these are some of the factors that decide angle of deviation now this graph that i have drawn if you remember uh, the special case that we had uh, discussed of this delta minimum which was 2i minus a this was the special case of delta minimum or minimum deviation 
uh, I have drawn a graph between angle of incidence on the x axis and angle of deviation delta on the uh, y axis. So this graph actually has a nature like this which actually tells us that if we let us say for example if we start from A. Okay? Now the position of A over here as you see this is the position of incidence angle. Okay, So let us call this as some I. Okay? Now I as and as and when we move to the right side we are increasing angle I. You see angle I is increasing. But what is happening to our delta? Delta it is the graph is actually coming down. So delta is decreasing. Okay. So with initial increase in angle I, delta is found to be dropping. Okay. But how long does it drop? We keep on increasing I, this keeps on dropping, dropping, dropping. And then suddenly at this particular point, you see this value that we have. This value that we have. This is your delta minimum because the graph is not going any further down. Okay, it started from here as and when I kept on increasing angle I. This is because this x axis is denoting angle I, angle of incidence. So I kept on increasing angle I, the graph kept on dropping. So delta kept on dropping because on y axis we have delta. So kept on dropping and it reached a value, a minimum value which we are calling delta minimum. Okay, so for a particular value of I over here, we got a delta minimum. Now if we increase I any further, you will see that delta actually increases. Okay, so it is this delta minimum that is represented over here. Okay, clear? Okay, so here are uh, some uh, questions based on uh, what we have discussed till now. Question 1, a ray of light incident at 48 degrees on a prism. Okay. So as and when you read the question, in your mind try to analyze what information is given. So here a ray of light is incident at 48 degrees. So that means this 48 degree is your angle I that is given. Okay. On a prism of refracting angle 60 degree. Okay. If you recall refracting angle is nothing but the angle of prism so your angle a capital angle a is 60 degree okay suffers minimum deviation okay so when there is a ray of light incident at 48 degree on a prism of refracting angle 60 it suffers delta minimum which is minimum deviation you have to calculate that minimum deviation so let us first solve the first question so i'll write down solution one okay what is the formula that we have? We have delta minimum is equal to 2 times I minus A. If you recall, this was that special case that we spoke about just now. Okay, This delta minimum is what we have to find out. 2 times angle of incidence. So angle of incidence is already given as 48. So you will simply put 2 into 48 degree minus A. And angle A is 60 degree. Angle A is nothing but the refracting angle. Okay. So this comes out to be 2 8s are 16, carry 1, 2 4s are 8, and 1 9 minus 60 degree. Okay. So 96 minus 60 that gives you 36 degrees. Okay. So your delta minimum has come out to be 36 degrees. Clear? Quite an easy question if you remember this special case formula. Okay, now coming to the second question which is in fact uh, 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 based on uh, diagram drawing. Complete the following diagrams to show the final emergent ray. Now there are two parts to this question. Okay, we will first discuss uh, the first part, the A part. Okay, here you can see that this is a prism that has been kept. It's a 90, 60 and 30 degree prism. It is kept in this particular position and there is a ray of light PQ which is falling like this okay so you have to complete the diagram keeping in mind all the necessary concepts of refraction and uh, other things okay so if you see the first thing that you notice is the first surface okay now this is air in which the ray was traveling initially and it has to enter into glass so there is a difference or the separation in the mediums okay the optical densities of air and glass they are going to be different okay so the first surface of separation that comes if you 
can label this as A, B and C. You will see that A, B is the first surface of separation that the ray P, Q encounters. Okay. So the very next question will come to your mind will be whether the ray will bend or not. It should bend but please remember once again this ray is falling normally if you can see although no angle has been given but from the uh, geometric look of the diagram you can say that pq is falling at 90 degree to the surface of separation okay so whenever there is a 90 degree fall please recall the ray will keep on going straight so the ray keeps on going straight like this till it reaches another separate sur surface of separation which is AC because now you see once it's uh, traveled into glass this is glass medium in which it is traveling now again it has to go into air because this side also you have air okay so once again from glass into air so this is from denser to rarer medium and this time the ray is not falling at 90 degree to the surface because the surface is slant okay so what we will have to do we will have to draw the normal first okay at this point if i start to draw the normal it will be drawn like this okay it will be drawn like this so now forget about this part now this is your ray that we are talking about and it is falling at this particular angle of incidence and it is trying to enter into a rarer medium okay from denser into rarer the rule is it will bend away from the normal okay so had there been no separation of uh, mediums the ray would have continued to go straight but since there is a difference in the medium, the ray will bend and it will bend away from the normal. Away from, where is the normal? This is the normal. So it can't keep on going straight. It has to bend away from the normal. So you will have to draw the final emergent ray like this. Okay. So there are uh, actually, in essence, there are two surfaces that you will have to keep in mind. One is this surface, the other one is this surface. Refraction is taking place at both surfaces. The only thing different with AB surface is because the ray was falling perpendicularly, so it kept on going straight. Okay. Whereas at this surface, the same rule applies that whenever it ray of light passes from denser to rarer, it bends away from the normal. Okay, so for that you have to draw the normal. So this is the normal. You can always label the diagram. This is the normal and this is the final emergent ray. Okay. This is the final emergent ray. Now let's have a look at this particular case which is uh, called uh, a case of identical prisms kept upside down. Okay. Now you see these are identical prisms. Identical means exactly same okay so they are basically made up of the same material this is also of the same glass this is also of the same glass the angles also are same in both the only difference is one is kept upside down the other one is kept on the base okay and there is a ray of light entering at an angle like this so now if you remember the moment this ray falls over here this was air this was glass again so you can always draw the normal to the surface okay so the ray has to bend and it has to bend towards the normal this time because this is traveling from rarer to denser medium unless and until you remember these rules it is going to be difficult for you to draw if you remember the rules it is going to be simple so instead of continuing to go straight like this the ray will bend towards the normal as you can see instead of going straight it has bent it has bent where towards the normal where is the normal this is the normal. so it has bent towards the normal okay now again when it reaches over here we'll have to again draw one normal and this time since it is going from denser to rarer it will bend away from the normal this time this is the normal so it will have to go like this okay so it bends instead of going straight like this it bends away from the normal and then it reaches the next prism okay which is identical okay so once again we will draw the normal over here once again it is going from rarer to denser so it will bend towards the normal again okay instead of going up like this it has bent towards the normal 
and then here again once again you draw the normal and again away from the normal okay so these rules you have to remember at the first surface it was going from rarer to denser then from denser to rarer then from rarer to denser again then from denser to rarer again okay so each time i actually it is the opposite of what happened in the previous step that is taking place okay at the first surface it bent towards the normal at the second surface it bent away from the normal then at the third surface again it bent towards the normal and then finally away from the normal okay so this is the final emergent ray that has come out so i'll draw this uh, more properly if you see something like this okay now if you observe this was the original direction of the very first ray that was there okay so this original direction and this final direction they will be parallel to each other okay it will be an observation that they will be parallel to each other because both these prisms were kept in the just exact opposite situation or uh, you know uh, direction this was kept with this prism was kept with the base pointing up whereas this prism was kept with the base downwards okay so they were put upside down in an inverse position and since they were made up of the same glass whatever effect this prism has produced this prism has actually negated that okay so this ray was going initially going downwards the final emergent ray is also going downwards although with a lateral shift that shift obviously is because of the refraction processes that have taken place okay so please note that there will be different surfaces at which you will have to determine the refraction processes okay so there are different uh, uh, diagrams many such diagrams given in the book i hope that you will now go back and uh, after going through the lecture properly once you have understood everything clearly then you will try to solve some of the questions or draw or complete some of the diagrams given in your book as well okay so next time we will start another lecture which will uh, be dealing with the the uh, the formula involving the apparent depth and the real depth if you remember we had discussed uh, a practical case scenario of a coin kept uh, below the surface of uh, water a coin which was kept in uh, the water and it appeared to be raised a little bit okay that raised portion we will try to find out uh, what is the relationship or what is the formula that is involved okay so till now this much is there for you all to study okay take care children thank you